So I want to explain why this workshop has started. Um, my colleague, uh, Professor Kasahara, uh, is an expert of genome assembly, developing genome assembly. And he is also um, uh, good at developing distributed processing systems. So I, I talked with him and what kind of system is needed for the future of genome sciences. And so, and, and that, that is the beginning of this workshop. So I want to, him to talk about the future of genome distributed processing program systems. But unfortunately, unfortunately he had a cold <laughs> today. He couldn't come. Um, so we about that. Um, but um, I want to show, um, okay, so the purpose of this workshop is to share the knowledge on what is needed in general informatics. And fortunately, uh, we have three invited speakers, Harry uh, Sensei invited uh, at the BBCLS, Ratka and I'm sorry for um, Alec and Ratka and Gohan. <coughs> we talk about um, what bioinformatics, several applications of bioinformatics. And I, and also, I will introduce about what is needed for managing large gem data sets. Um, because, um, due to the emergence of the next generation sequencers, we have to manage a massive amount of data in recent years. So, <coughs> and the data size makes it difficult to analyze. Um, uh, analyze and general big data information and also simply uh, writing program for processing such data set, set that the data set is also difficult. So I want to explain what is the difficulty in processing such data set. And also I invited uh, com several computer scientists. Uh, Prof Professor Tawa is an expert of RL and security processing. So, I want to know the state, what is the state of the art and techniques to process uh, in a massive amount of data in power and power. And also I want to deepen the understanding of what is difficult in making your standard programs out of this uh, the my, um, my objective for organizing this workshop is to, I want to find a solution, a solution for efficiently processing large data sets. And so and I hope in this workshop we can discuss uh, this topic from various aspects, uh, from system side of view and also application side of view. Uh, or uh, bioinformatic applications such as genome alignment, genome assembly, or comparative genomics, and so on. And also, because of next generation sequence, so even a biologist has to write a simple program. So, but these people are usually not good at writing program or distributed programming. So, we have to know what is necessary for such a beginner or programming uh, is needed to write these parallel programs. <coughs> so I hope uh, you, you can make questions at any time for, to, um, <coughs> to share the knowledge and share the understanding. Various people are gathering here, so there's no need. <laughs> No need to mind uh, if you um, the level of knowledge is different for each people. So we have to um, share the understanding between various areas: computer science, bioinformatics, and biology. <coughs> so here is a program today. Uh, I took a fast. Then uh, at ten fifteen, I'll 
and what the people are about. Um, uh, Alec is a project leader of Biomark. <coughs> he will talk about how to manage various kinds of data sets, how to provide a data set to users. And we are together, we talk about compatible genomics. <laughs> and yeah, his title is catchy, how to make a monkey <laughs> a functional adaptation in the primary gem. So the complete program is here. So you can access the internet using this, this SSRE and password in this room. And after the lunch break, uh, the afternoon session will start 1.50. It's just a plan. So <coughs> in the afternoon session, go around and talk about text and programs. I'm not sure the exact, uh, exact title <laughs> is going here. Uh, is this OK? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and at from 2, uh, so Masahara Katahiro is absent, so <laughs> Professor Tawa will talk about sorry, the visual screen resolution is not correct. Okay, I'll have to change. Professor Tawa will talk about GXP is a shared environment, a kind of power processing environment, which makes you easy to write this distributed workflow. And our lab, our team in our lab uses this tool frequently. And it really makes it easier to write power and distributed programming. Okay, so let's start my talk. My talk is about managing large GM databases. But to explain what is large GM databases, we, I have to explain something. Uh, various aspects of general data processing. So, I simplify the problem. My talk is about this the input, given an input, applying a function f, then produces the output. I will, today I talk about this, and this tells everything. We can, I can enhance this framework, this program flow, and at the end of my talk, I hope you will understand how difficult this problem is. <laughs> and to enhance, enhance the example, I, I will show you an example of read alignment. Okay. So in this case, the input is first Q file, which contains gen sequences and best protein values, and function F is an alignment problem. Any alignment problem, program you can imagine. The WA ball time, there is an alignment problem if it is in general science. Any one of these, OK. And the output is its alignment results. So, yeah, if uh, half Q part is just a text format, which can be sequenced and just will be valid. And the output contains uh, alignment information. Uh, to which chromosome and to which position to, uh, the read, read data obtained by next generation sequencers are uh, aligned. And this screenshot is uh, generated by UTGB, University of Tokyo General Browser, developed by developed in our laboratory. Then, okay, so to show what kind of data you will be produced by next generation sequencer? I, I, I want to introduce the cost of gen sequencing. So in 2000, the cost of gen sequencing uh, is $10,000 for uh, for produce million million of cases. Uh, but the cost dropped sharply in 2010. Just 
to read our genome holds human genome sequences. And in 2000, Human Genome Project spent much amount of money, uh, one, more than one billion dollars, to decipher genome sequences. But now we can read our genome more than one thousand dollars. If we use Illumina's genome sequencer, probably uh, we need 50x, 50 fold coverage to detect um, SNPs, uh, uh, <coughs> homozygous or heterozygous SNPs to detect, um, to detect them. 50x coverage is necessary, and this cost will be 15 thousand dollars. So yeah, the, the target input has this amount, this set. <coughs> so now the secure file has uh, 50x coverage human whole genome sequences. And it, um, from my experience, it is about 500 gigabytes of text data. And an alignment program. The alignment program is the same, and the output will be 750 gigabytes, which contain sequences, with sequences, and also the alignment data, which comes from a start position or uh, alignment state, etc. And the problem is the working test set becomes huge. For the state, sweet space required for storing these inputs and outputs is 1.2 terabytes. And also, this computation needs two to three days if using single CPUs. So, we have to, we cannot write such a long day, so we have to shorten the time needed to process this alignment program, and also, and also we have to. We want to reduce the stress space needed for storing these input and output. <coughs> um, simple strategy is applying compression. For example, using GZ. So if we apply GZ to fast few files, the size of the data will be one fix of the original input. So 500 gigabytes of data will be 100 gigabytes of the data. And also, the output also can be reduced. Uh, the sum format, a uh, sum format is a de facto standard for describing alignment information. A uh, sum format has a variant called BAM. It's a binary sum format. And applying BAM compression, 750 gigabytes of data can be 108. 80 gigabytes, almost one fourth of the original data size. So total space, total storage space required dropped from 1.2 terabytes to 280 gigabytes. However, this kind of compression requires additional overhead for compression and decompression. And I here I show simple benchmark results. Of applying ZZ compression to decompression. For compressing one gigabyte of data, 2.5 minutes are required. So for compressing 500 gigabytes of data, we need 20 hours. It's huge. It's much more time. And also, and Z thing, and the applying and Z and Z decompression of one gigabyte of data is 30 seconds. So, <coughs> Yeah, compression and decompression takes much amount of time. So, next step is to split files into several pieces. <coughs> if we split fast Q files into several files, then applying ZZ <coughs> for each of them. We can reduce the total time needed to compress the data and also the compression can, can be shorter. So, 
by splitting, splitting the input data, we can easily parallelize the workflow of the management process. Given the input, the input is now several files. A function F applied to each of input. Then output will be distributed. So we have to match the result to produce the final output. So this kind of parallelization is possible and also by using ZXP main, uh, which is developed by Professor Tawa. Um, it becomes quite fast. However, the problem is still there. Scalability and performance issues. So the number of dead splits limit the power reason. So power reason I need. If we split the data into three files, only three CPUs can be used to process the data at the same time. And also, this kind of workflow needs frequent uh, access to file systems. So, zipping, the unzipping into the file occurs simultaneously, and also producing output. So, Right access to disk occurs concurrently, so the first system should be tolerant for this kind of concurrent <coughs> file accesses. So if you use NFS, this kind of workflow doesn't scale well. So if you want to run this kind of workflow, you need a power file system such as Lustre, Cluster FS. So, <coughs> which is capable to handle frequent disk IOs. But I'm not sure how many people can install this kind of file system in practice. This needs some expertise in system administration. Okay, so, <coughs> however, this strategy is probably the most available because we can use existing Unix tools such as CAD, count, or web sources, etc. We can use them without any modifications in this workflow. So function F can be any Unix command. And also other tools for processing files data to last in the real many to exist for processing files of data can be used as function F. And even if you don't have a modern, modern parallel file systems, uh, you can um, make efficient this workflow by pressing this input into some local storage, local hard drive. Then you can uh, multiply the number of disk heads to make you know, this work for tolerant for concurrent data accesses. Okay, so uh, it's next uh, I want to show a more advanced approaches for processing massive amount of data. Uh, here is an example of map reuse program which is proposed by Google. And there is an open source implementation called Abach Hadoop. Maybe some people use it, but I think there are some shortcomings. And so, oh, okay, anyway, I want to show uh, what is map that is. Map is a process of, um, is process consisting of map phase. Map phase applies function F to each chunk of the so input file is split into several pieces. Uh, in the previous slide, the number of files determines the power reasons of concurrent processing. But in this case, the number of chunks, you can determine the number of chunks by yourself. So uh, we, we can increase the power reason to many um, CPU nodes. And the functional F 
So this is particularly key and by pairs. For, um, for example, in general alignment, the key should key should be chromosome name and start position. And in the way you can share them so that you can sort the data according to the joint coordinate. And so what is important in MathWays is to give some program semantics uh, in taking the, the evaluation order of each function doesn't matter. You can you can so in simple simplest simplest case you can evaluate the input part from the top to tail. But if you use map function you 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 know, you are the same input files can be split into several pieces and you can apply map function f to each piece of the data individually. And and the second step we must reduce is to match together the intermediate data. Um, <coughs> Combines the output. So, map reduce has to transfer the data from mapper to the users, and it transfer map reduce uses intermediate files. So, to implement map reduce, you need um, frequent discussions. So file systems should be capable to handle frequent disk IOs to efficiently run map reduce programs. Okay. But map reduce is not so simple as it was. Various options exist. For example, chunk size, what chunk size is appropriate? For processing function the default size chunk size is 64 megabytes but this can be too large for some people if you, if you have thousand of CPU cores you have to you should use more smaller chunks to increase the power raising of the program and also the next problem is where to store these data chunks if the data chunks are stored into a single file, no power is obtained. So some, someone has to decide where to store the data, data chunks, local list or shared file system. So and also replication strategy must be considered and also input file compress or not to compress the input file should be considered. The compression and compression with some additional overheads. And so if you store up the input file as a low text, uh, you have to face another problem. Um, the problem is text based processing is very slow. Yeah. If you use some read write function in Java, you can achieve only 100 megabytes per second, which is lower than standard disk sequential reads can performance for the current of this slides. And also if at split by table, split by camera, which are additional overhead. So probably 50 megabytes per second is it maximum to processing this data set. So because of this there was a debate on which is better map reduce or using some parallel DB database management system. Um, some database folks uh, argue map Hadoop is too slow because it has to process X data at this speed. But Google, Google, Google uh, created a counterpart. Hadoop is Indeed, slow, but Google's one is not. Because Google's map reduce uses binary format for processing text uh, input and output records. 
So, let's say Google. But instead of Google's not producing, Google has said they use political buffers, uh, which uh, it produces, given the object record definition, uh, the protocol buffer plays a binary reader and writer program. So, source code generation script. Is contained in the buffers. Then by using this reader and writers, uh, accelerate input and that put the processing 80 times faster than simply passing text data. So, this is another key so <coughs> to improve the performance of uh, large data processing. And so, I want to show you another. Example: How to make efficient the the processing <laughs> and by using columnar storage. Then we consider a query to find paired entries whose paired whose insert size is larger than 300 base pairs. Yeah, so the input is the same as the input. Now uh, is the some alignment result data is 180 gigabytes. And program is a simple script program for extracting sound records whose piece of size is rather than 300. And the output now from the main and start position. So simply processing 180 gigabytes of data uh, is 30 minutes uh, if we use 100 megabytes per second, uh, which is the standard performance for collect hard disk drives. If we use columnar storage, columnar uh, storage means extract columns of the required, required yield from the data. The Amount, uh, this size is given 15 gigabytes, while the original input was 100 gigabytes later. So, in this type of, in this query, we only care about this small data set, not the entire data set. So, if we have a speed, the speed is containing only the necessary kind this kind of query can finish in less than three minutes by by using single CPU. We can if we can use multiple CPUs we can further increase in the performance. Okay. And also the pattern input and applying function F and producing the output is still the same. But the input can be can vary. So we, in biology, we have to manage, we have to use various kinds of data format. Fast to pass through, BED, some of them for legal format for writing, <laughs> graph, graph data, RDA, MX, various formats exist. And every year, some people develop their own data formats. So we have to write adapters to process these data formats. But Implementing distributed processing for each set is uh, it's a very tedious task. So I propose to use some um, adapter called lens. So in input data, various kinds of data sets are converted to the pre structured data by using lens. And in parallel and distributed system, we only care about the two structures. So we have to implement uh, parallel scale or parallel query processing only for these two structures to make use of these data. So, 
here is my ongoing work. Uh, I want to, I am originally a database system researcher and gradually moving to the genomic field. And I want to, my, my, my goal is to develop some parallel database system for managing the science data. My system is called Gen Weaver, a next generation review and next generation sciences, uh, which aims to provide for various format adapters and lens for various project formats, and also provide compressed binary formats. So using binary format is a key to increase the performance pixel processing. And also applying compression is also another key to reduce the state size require to pose the input and output. And by developing complex and special data text database for three structure data, um, I want to implement distributed data processing over these two structure data. Selection, projection, join of various data sets and also map reduce questions. Uh, and so I also want to make this uh, query result to show and I want to see browse this query results using uh, UTCB and developed in our laboratory. So here is a summary of my talk. Input and function, applying function and produces an output. This writing this kind of program is very easy, but efficiently execute this process is quite complex. I'm sure you understand what is difficult. What is difficult and what has to be solved in the future. Uh, so the cause of difficulty lies in we are not sure what type of, how to represent input and output data, compressed or not, or not. So using ZZ, and using ZZ or not is a trade-off between reducing storage space, um, data splitability, and compression, decompression time. Um, using plot tables data or tree structure data is another key because we have to handle various types of biological data formats. Using only table structure tab split data is probably impossible. So we have to extend Apache's Hadoop only handles table structure data, but we have need for example XML or RDF. So RDF is quite flat format, but the internal data is very structured, so we have to extend the uh, single habit in the format to more general. Um, and also using both text or binary format. And how to split the data. And if the input has, so the input also can be in some database, MySQL databases, or BT index can be used to efficiently access the portion of the data. <coughs> so there are many vibrations. And also, there are another problem. I haven't explained it about this, but data skill handling. So in genome science, you frequently observe chromosome 1 has the, is the longest length, so the alignment problem needs to, for chromosome 1 is, is, long, is the longest time. So there's death skew from chromosome 1 to chromosome X. <coughs> okay, so this is the end of my presentation. So, any questions? <coughs>